What's up, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube world? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon 11970 and as always, I thank you guys for visiting my channel. Now, um, I've been getting some pretty good responses from some of the videos I've been doing lately, and it seems that people really do appreciate the analogies that I use. And somebody actually asked me how I come up with them. To be honest, I don't know. I've always been one of those people that can see a complicated issue and can condense it down to its most simplest forms so people can understand things. Um, I don't know where that comes from, but that's always been a gift of mine. And uh, I've used it a lot in, especially in these videos that I do, to help people along. So I'm going to do the same thing here when it comes to why is it so hard, <clears throat> excuse me, for people like myself and others to awaken the sleeping masses who tend to either ignore you laugh and make fun of you or get angry at you, all the things that we would think as rational people, telling people what's going on, you'd think they'd appreciate it. And I'm going to explain in an analogy pretty much why they don't. So let's just assume that um, you were about to visit a friend's house. Let's just say it's 11 o'clock at night. You were bored. You know your friend is usually up. You want to go visit him. And you pull up to their house and you see smoke starting to come from the windows of his house. And you see his house is just starting to get to the point where it's catching on fire. Not major, but enough to say, wow, there's a fire. So it ends up the front door is unlocked. You walk in and you're calling your friend's name. You don't hear anything. So for whatever reason, you search from room to room and you see your friend just lying in his bed sleeping. And he's got this big smile on his face, totally oblivious to what's going on and what's about to happen. Now, you try and wake him up. And you're like, let's just say his name is Bob. And you're trying, Bob, there's a fire. You got to get up. You're, you got to get out. You're in danger. Wake up. And no matter how much you shake him, he just doesn't wake up. And what you don't realize is the dream he's having is the best dream he's ever had in his life. Let's just say he's dreaming about 20 different supermodels, all wanting them, all drop-dead gorgeous, all wanting to be with them, and he's on a yacht, and he's the most handsome, richest person in the world, He's and he's just he's built like a superhero, has the ability to fly, bend steel, all this stuff, and he's having the best dream of his lifetime. And no matter how much you try and wake him from this dream, he just subconsciously doesn't want to awaken from it. And let's just say at one point, you actually get him to the point where you kind of shake him up a little bit. But he doesn't realize where he is. He doesn't know what's going on. He's still partially in that dream world. And he's just like, what the hell? Why are you waking me up? Why are you in my house? Get the F out of my house. And you're trying to explain to him, dude, your house is on fire. You got to get up now. And he doesn't hear it because he's still kind of three quarters of the way asleep. He's just mad that you're there. And he's like, dude, get the hell out of my house. And he goes back to sleep. Now. As you, as your, as the caring friend, you are not going to just walk out of there and let your friend die in a fire. And trust me, I know about this because my father died in a fire. And if I had any opportunity to save him, even if I had to sacrifice my own life to do it, I would have done it in a heartbeat. So as a real friend, you'll keep trying to wake him up. Even if he gets pissed at you, even if he turns around and he tries to go back to sleep and, and have that continue that dream, he may turn around and just punch you in the face. He get the f out of my house. Why are you here? It's late o'clock. At, it's late at night. I didn't invite you. Get out. And he doesn't hear what you're saying. He's just focusing on the fact that somebody woke him up. He's not coherent. He was having the best dream of his life, and somebody is trying to ruin that for him. Now, just imagine if you decide to say, all right, there's nothing I can do to wake you up. So you just get him out of bed and you start carrying him on your shoulders out his door. And he doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know there's a fire. He's just sitting there like, why is this guy doing this? Get me off of you. You're an idiot. I'll never be your friend again. You're a jerk. You're this, you're that. Cursing up a storm, trying to fight you every step of the way until you get him out of the house. You smack him across the face and say, dude, look at your house. And he turns around and sees it a towering inferno that he didn't even realize. And he realizes that you as a friend, because you loved him so much, you didn't give up. 
You didn't use his negativity to stop you. You didn't walk away when your friend needed you. You didn't abandon him when he cursed you because you realized he was just asleep and he doesn't understand what was going on. But you as the awakened one, you that knew what was going on, cared about him so much that you put your own life in danger and your friendship in jeopardy to save him. And that's when they're grateful. So the next time you think you can't make a difference and you want to walk away because it's easier, think about that scenario. If that was your friend, if that was your family member, would you walk away just because they didn't know what was going on? And you as the dreamer, the ones who make fun of us, that call us conspiracy theorists and wearing our tinfoil hats, which, you know, that's real original. Um, and all the name calling and all the things that you automatically dismiss because, oh, it's crazy and that's stupid and you're paranoid and you're this, you're that. Well, as if you like to dream, bear in mind, it's a dream world. And I don't care how good that dream is. Do you want to spend the rest of your days lying in bed with your eyes closed, going nowhere and doing nothing to fulfill a fantasy that is not real? Because it feels good. It feels safe. It feels comforting. That is exactly what's going on in this dream world that you're living in and this illusion that you think the world is fair. And you refuse to see all the things around you. It's the la la la, I don't hear it. La la la, I don't see it. La la la, I can't speak it. And you get mad at the people who are risking their lives or just risking humiliation and attack just to save your sorry ass. Your ungrateful self who would rather be in a dream world and hurt the very people that are trying their best to say, wake up, you're in trouble and I'm here to save you. Instead of appreciating people like us, you call us crazy. You call us paranoid. You make fun of us. You attack us. You ignore us. Well, guess what? If your friend decided to say, to hell with you, burn. Well, you can have that wonderful dream until all of a sudden the fire engulfs your room and consumes you where you sleep and see how much better off you're in in that dream world because it'll come to a quick, painful end. So if you want to be that careless about yourself, that's fine. It's your choice. But just imagine if you stop that person from saving the rest of your family in that house. And let's just say out of some miracle, you escaped somehow, but your family didn't. And I don't wish this on my worst enemy, even these idiots that I got to deal with on a regular basis. You think you might regret that choice? You think you'd never want to go back to sleep again? If you think this world is perfect, then please explain to me why things are not getting better. Why is it that people are getting sicker? Why is it people are getting heavier? Why are people getting more depressed? Why are children being born with more problems? Why are we getting broker as a society? Why are we losing our energy and enthusiasm? Why are people losing their ability to think for themselves, to create for themselves? Why is it we depend on these people that say, we'll take care of you, just trust in us. And yet time and time again, they've proven, not by their words, but by their actions, that it's quite the opposite. And you want to be mad at the very people who are trying to tell you that eating vegetables are better for you, that exercise is better for you, that staying away from this fiat currency is better for you, that walking away and not consenting to illegal laws is beneficial to you, not trusting the mainstream media, not taking their medicines, providing you with things like sun gazing, as crazy as it sounds. Like I said, I've sun gazed now for two years. All my life, I've been sick. I've had breathing problems like walking pneumonia, asthma, bronchitis, you name it, since I was a baby. I've almost died five times in my lifetime. There wasn't a year in my entire life where I didn't get sick at least a half a dozen times every single year. I couldn't go outside and shovel the snow. I would shovel the snow. I'd get two shovels full and I'd start having an asthma attack. 
Since I started sun gazing two years ago, I have been sick a total of zero times. And for the first time in my life, I actually shoveled the driveway. Didn't need an inhaler. Didn't have a breathing problem. I don't get sick anymore. Is it a coincidence? It sure could be. Or maybe there's something to it that the beneficial energies of the sun, the vitamin Ds, and all the other things that we cannot see that are the directly influencing our body and our health. But if you want to take chemicals, if you want to take medicines, if you want radioactive treatment as a solution to, and a cure, that's as ridiculous as saying, I need war for peace. But yet we still allow it over and over again. And we get mad at the very people who love you enough to continually try and help you despite your crudeness, your arrogance, your meanness, your ungratefulness. And I will not give up on the people I love. And I will not give up on people I don't even know. The trolls that hate me, I don't wish a damn thing wrong with them. I hope one day they find a better way. But they will never stop me. They can make all the accusations and assumptions they want, and they'll do the same to you. And that's why, like, YouTube and Google and all these corporations, they, they do as much as they can to frustrate you, to limit the amount of views, to make it harder to comment or to see comments. Because I've, I've had comments where somebody wrote, thanks, and it was sent into automatic spam. Really? But yet, if you're Pootie Pie or you're one of these mainstream Google people that are making video game uh, channels or just women showing off their bras and stuff like that, they'll get millions of hits in a second. No problem there because you're making them money. Stop being programmed. Stop pushing away the people who love you enough to say, hello, McFly. You should be on your knees thanking them for saving you or trying to save you. And for those of you like me out there that are giving this information and we're doing it, we get attacked, we get insulted, we get ridiculed, we get walked away from. There's not much love in this. And for those of you who continue to do it anyway, shows you're a damn good person. You should be proud of yourself. We need more people like you out there. So the next time somebody makes you feel inferior, think about that person. Because if they didn't have people like you, those sorry asses would be having a wonderful dream, not doing anything in their lives, and burning in a fire. Maybe just not literally. So this video is a wake-up call for all the world. The powers that be are so good at what they've done is they've gotten people to fight for them and not even profit off of it. So these idiot trolls and these haters and the people that will never listen to anything you say and automatically dismiss it and make fun of it, you're helping the corrupt system. And the people that are in the military complex working for corporations all around the world and the police officers who are just doing their job Think about who you're doing that job for. Because if the world was a utopia and everything was going great, there would be no reason to complain. But we have a few at the top with almost everything, dangling a few carrots to the masses, and we all are supposed to thank them and be grateful and allow them to make up all these laws that imprison us for the most ridiculous things, steal away our wealth, steal away our freedom by giving us the illusion of choice. And the people that try their best to study and research and learn and pay attention, and they take that knowledge instead of selfishly keeping it to themselves to benefit themselves, they distribute it out to others, and you're going to be ungrateful? You're going to ignore it? I'm sorry, you're an idiot. You should be thanking the person next to you that showed this video to you or somebody else's video. You could sit there and laugh all you want. The person you hurt in the long run is yourself. That, to me, is the definition of insanity. Because like they've said throughout history, if you do not research history, you are doomed to repeat it.
And the people at the top that are controlling all of this by using your emotions and divide and conquer to work against one another, they're masters at this stuff. And they know how to get you to do the job for them. They've perfected slavery so much that you don't even realize you're a slave. Because you think the slave term that you've learned is just one specific group that was placed in chains and had to do work for their masters. Well, what do you do? Do you work? Or do you roam around wherever you want, doing whatever you want, whatever brings you the highest joy? Or do you work to pay a debt? Isn't that the definition of slavery? What they've done is they've perfected slavery. They've taken you out of your chains and out of your prison cells. Because if you are chained or if you are in a containment, you know you're a slave, you're going to do your best to escape. And they'll lose many a people that way because they'll rise up and fight against the tyranny. But if you give them the illusion of freedom and you make them put themselves in debt and you spend your whole life instead of doing all the things that you love, you're doing all the things to make enough money just to keep paying back these loans that you borrow and the credit that you build up that creates more and more interest that you have to work harder and harder for, you're a slave to the system. And they give you some choices. Oh, do you want Energizer? You want Duracell. You want Coke? Or you want Pepsi. You want Republican? You want Democrat. Do you want this fist? Do you want this fist? Here's your choice. So to the people out there that don't give up, keep spreading your messages because that's exactly what they want you to do is to give up. And that's why no matter what this does and whatever opinions people have of me, it's not going to stop my message. Because that does not help the world get into a better place. And now I'm not suggesting that my ability myself is going to change the world. But if I change the world of one person and they change the world of another person and it continues on, well, then I've done something good. And I know I've done good. So it doesn't matter if 99.9% .9 of the people that watch this very video sit there pointing and saying, oh, what an idiot, what a jerk, what a loser, what a this, what a that. I'll never listen to him. Oh, I don't know why I'm here Ugh. saying all these negative things. If one person out of a million people watch this video says, you know what? I am so glad I watched this. It changed my life. It changed my attitude. It put me in the direction I needed to be. Thank you for saying what I needed to hear. Well, then you know what? It was worth it. And that's what these morons out there don't understand. And they will never understand. So it's easier to be a hating individual who hates people for what they believe in or what they stand for. Because it doesn't take any effort to do that. It's easy to hate. Oh, I hate you. That doesn't take much effort. It takes effort to learn, to study, to research, to sacrifice, to educate, to motivate, to inspire. That requires work. That requires more than the primitive part of your brain. Because it doesn't take intelligence to put up your fists and want to hit somebody. But it sure does take a lot of it to create a symphony, to build a building, to come up with an idea, to help a friend, to create a solution. What road do you want to be traveling? The easy road that leads you nowhere and makes you never remembered by anybody other than the, the few people that were unfortunate enough to be in your family that have no choice? Or to be a person that was remembered for the good that you tried to do. It doesn't guarantee you'll achieve anything. But I'll tell you this much. If you take one of my haters on this side. And put myself on the other. And for some tragic reason. We both died tomorrow. I guarantee you. That more people. Will be affected by my passing. Than the person that people could not stand. And at the very least. Some people here would be sad that I was gone, while a lot of people over here will be glad he's gone, or she's gone. Is that the kind of life you want to lead? Don't be too proud of that, because it doesn't take intelligence, it doesn't take wisdom, it doesn't take effort to be a hating, abusive, evil person. It just takes a mouth. And a minimal amount of brain power. Congratulations. You sure are putting your mark on this world. Those who make an effort. 
There's a sacrifice. Like any hero's movie ever made, and every hero's novel ever created, they have to be broken down to be risen back up. So you're going to be tested. You're going to be abused. You're going to be insulted. You're going to be ignored because anybody can say they're strong. And anybody can be happy when everything's great. But can you still be happy and still be positive and still be giving and still be caring when all the world hates you for what you're doing? And that's why there will be people, no matter what I do or whatever you do, they'll hate you for it. But it won't stop you unless you choose to let it. And I almost did that. So I've been there. I understand. But my job is to motivate because they motivate me. They present life's workings of the things that I ask for in life. And they say, here, here's a bunch of hate. Here's a bunch of people that are trying to stop you. Here's all the people testing your strength. Is that what you want? Because I'm showing it to you. Life is saying I'm showing that to you. Is that what you want? And you could say, oh, well, I guess it's presented to me. I guess I have no choice. Of course you have a choice. Just because it's presented to you doesn't mean you have to take it. Remember my other video about the crap sandwich. Somebody presents you a, a crap sandwich. You shouldn't just say, well, it's the only thing that somebody's handed me, so I guess I might as well eat it. I'm not going to like it. It's not going to taste good. It's probably going to make me sick. But if that's my only choice, why is that your only choice? It's only your only choice if you make it that, uh, that way. Thanks for watching. Peace.